Today we are headed out the door and we are going to one of my very favorite thrift stores. It is our local Humane Society thrift store. It is a nonprofit and all of the proceeds go to help the animals in our community. Today is a special day at Retail's thrift store. They save up all of the Halloween decorations that get donated throughout the entire year for this one Halloween launch. The staff at Retails has been working really hard at unboxing and going through all of the Halloween decorations that they've been collecting. So we are headed there today for the grand opening of their Halloween and fall decor section. Georgia and the team here transformed this entire space in just two days. They save all of the Halloween decorations year round and they keep them in the back area and then they've just kind of had plans on how they wanted to DIY and repurpose some of these pieces and turn it into a fun little spooky center where everyone can come and shop and find some great Halloween decorations. In fact, we are even gonna get to go backstage today and we're gonna get to see all the other Halloween decorations that they have. So this is just a portion of what they have right now on hand. And as things sell, they're gonna keep pulling out more. taking it next level with this. Oh my goodness. You guys know I don't do scary. <laughs> this is so wrong. <laughs> but I really, really appreciate the links that they go to for Halloween. I could spend all day here going through these boxes. This is their holiday section in the back of the store. And so they save all of the Halloween decor, Thanksgiving and Christmas back here. And I can just imagine what it would be like to reopen all of these boxes. They probably get packed away as the donations come in, but then it's like a grand unboxing once the holiday arrives. Today's episode is all about Halloween, but the first week of November, they are going to go through these boxes and get the Christmas and Thanksgiving decorations out. So make sure you plan a trip to retails in early November because I cannot even imagine all of the treasures that are tucked away in here. Well, I didn't end up buying any Halloween decor today. I did find an entire cart full of really awesome vintage finds. So let me show you what I found. I thought this vase was really interesting how it has a brass cage-like design on the outside of the glass vase. And this glass vase on the inside has this beautiful yellow honey color to it. This is a modern made piece. It is not vintage. One of the ways you can spot that pretty easily is when the gold is not real brass and it is just painted gold tone on top of a really lightweight metal. But it's still a really cool piece and I thought that this would be fun to put in my outdoor space. This is a beautiful studio pottery handmade piece. It has these little holes here with flowers around them for you to put your flower buds in. I think this is a really unique piece because it's so simple when you turn it like this and then you pop in your flowers and you let the flowers become the statement piece. It has drainage holes here on both sides and I'm almost wondering if this was originally supposed to sit in some kind of a bowl or a shallow vase. It definitely could be used that way or as a standalone piece, but then I'm not quite sure how you would get the water to stay in there. Now that I'm looking at the piece, another thing you could use it for is to put incense sticks in here. Although if you had five incense sticks going at the same time, that might be a pretty intense smell. <laughs> Thank you. 
I got this beautiful pair of Artist Sign Studio Pottery Candle Holders. They are so beautiful with the pink and purple flowers. What's kind of fun about these is that there's several different ways that you could use them. I think how I would probably use them is to just put a tall candle in the top of each of these, but because the bottom is open, you could also put these over a tea light and then you could have the candle light flickering through the open design. I think that would be really pretty. I wonder if you could even put a glass base with a little bit of oil in the bottom and have the wick come out through the top of there. So you could turn them into oil lamps too. These would be so pretty to decorate with in the springtime. This is another vase that is a modern made piece and I'll tell you how I know that. This is actually plastic. It is not glass, unfortunately, but it probably wouldn't be hard to find a skinny glass vase that would fit in here at another thrift store. I even think that this would look amazing if the vase was taller and actually stuck out through the top. So I'm gonna keep an eye out at thrift stores and see if I can find a replacement for this plastic. But until then, I actually think this is gonna go in my windowsill in my kitchen. I've been doing really good on picking up sculptural pieces lately. That is something I'm always on the hunt for for my own home and also to bring to my online store. And I thought that this was a beautiful one. It's got a woman holding her baby. It looks to me like it's probably a 1980s revival of the Art Deco era. And yeah, I just thought that she was really pretty. Rustic wooden bowls are a great accessory no matter what your style is. One of the things that I'm always looking for when I pick up bowls is something that has been hand carved. I love the fact that this has two separate sections in it. This would be a great piece for putting nuts in when you're entertaining. You could even use it for little bath salts by your bath. There are so many different things that you can do with these little wooden bowls for decorating. I think it's important when you have a space to add a little bit of warmth and a wooden bowl is a great way to do that. I want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. One of my favorite features with Squarespace are the newsletters. I look forward every month to making my newsletter because it's not only letting customers know that my first Friday sale has launched, but it's also a way for me to connect directly one-on-one -on -one with them. I can let them a little bit inside my life, let them know what I've been up to this past month, what I'm gonna be doing this next month, and it's also a time where I can share videos that they may have missed and additional content that hasn't been seen anywhere else. With the constantly changing algorithms in social media, it has never been more important to have a direct source of contact with your followers. I used to have to pay third party to have my newsletters go out to all of my followers, and now that is all completely integrated into my Squarespace. When a new person finds me, they can go directly to my website and subscribe for additional content. And with Squarespace, it is completely customizable. So if you wanna have a landing page where they can easily find out how to get notified of upcoming sale launches, fun things going on behind the scenes, business courses you're launching, anything you can imagine. With Squarespace, you can easily control exactly how they get that information and where they access it. Head to squarespace.com to start your free trial today. And when you are ready to launch your own website, head to squarespace.com slash left coast to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. I guess you could say that today was my lucky day thrifting. Look at this beautiful art glass four leaf clover. I thought this was kind of a unique design to it and I could tell by the way that the glass is blown and the incredible substantial weight to this piece that it is a high quality made glass piece. And I just thought that that was really cute with the four leaf clover. Here's the bottom side in case any of you experts out there know anything. I was looking for maybe a signature or something to be etched here in the bottom, but I didn't see anything. I don't think that I will ever be a glass collector in my lifetime. I just don't see it in the cards for me, 
But after my trip to Murano, Italy, and getting to see the process of art glass, I really do have a new appreciation for it. And I know a lot of you are into glass, so whenever I come across a piece that does speak to me and fits kind of the aesthetic of my online shop, I'm gonna pick it up so that you guys have a chance to get it. This is a Middle Eastern Dalla coffee pot. And I love this one because it has this adorable little bird here on the very top. These are such beautiful coffee pots. We drink a lot of coffee at our house. We alternate between doing pour over coffee, French press, and now we even use an Italian coffee pot. But I have yet to try making coffee with one of these Middle Eastern coffee pots. I think that this is a sign that I need to give that a try. So I'm gonna watch some YouTube videos on how to make coffee, and hopefully I will update you guys in an episode soon on how this works for making coffee. Have any of you ever tried using one of these to make coffee before? If you have, I would love to hear your advice on how to make the best coffee with one of these coffee pots. This set of copper strainers is probably my most valuable find from today. They are kind of in rough shape, but I also think that there's something that's really special when you can see the age and the patina on pieces. So I don't know whether I want to clean these up or whether I want to leave them in the condition that they are in. They kind of have that perfectly balanced aged patina. So I'm really not sure what I wanna do. What do you guys think that I should do? Should I polish these up and make them shiny and new? Or should I leave them as is and sell them to someone who's going to love them for this look and maybe have a more primitive style in their home? I don't know what I should do. This is a tough one. Whenever there's patina in like blobs or different areas and it's not nice and even, I usually would polish it up. But in this case, I mean, this looks kind of fantastic, doesn't it? Let me know in the comments below what you think that I should do with these copper strainers. What would you do? I gotta know, what would you do? I found two gorgeous pieces of Oregon myrtle wood. This one is a beautiful little shallow pedestal bowl in really good condition. It just needs a little bit of wood oil and it's gonna look brand new. And I really love this one because it has the lid on it. And something extra cool about this one, it came with the original paperwork. Look how cute this is. I love when things come with the original paperwork. The story of Oregon myrtle wood. You guys, it's a story. Are you guys ready for story time? The story of Oregon Myrtlewood. Myrtlewood is one of the rarest woods in the world. Okay, I'm not gonna read the whole thing to you. One, because I'm dyslexic, and two, because there's a lot to read. This is going to stay in the bowl until it finds its forever home. I wouldn't say that I am a collector of cutting boards, but I do like to pick up a good variety of cutting boards for staging things. And I will often layer these behind other items on my open shelves in my kitchen. Since we just finally got our new kitchen shelves installed, I've got the perfect place to put this. And I'm sure you guys will be seeing this make an appearance in my upcoming cooking vlogs and also in a lot of my kitchen shots. Look at this little coffee mug. Isn't it fantastic? I believe that this is a vintage like 1970s Hornsey mug. Correct me if I'm wrong. I could be saying the wrong name or mispronouncing that, but that is what is coming to my mind when I look at this. Obviously I have to keep it because it's got critters on it and it's blue and green and I just really like it. So this is gonna be one of my new coffee mugs that I drink out of daily. I also picked up these three bracelets at retails. This brass one was only $3.49. It is a really thin bangle, which will make it a really good one to layer with other bangles. This mixed metal one was kind of interesting. It's kind of in the style of Pal Capenas and Carl Tasha. It is not signed, but for $3.99, it was a great deal. It's a really small cup though, so it might actually be made for a child. And then this Mexican piece was $4.49. 
It's got a cool geometric design with crushed stones in it, and it is stamped Mexico. It is not sterling, but for $4.49, that's still a great deal. Thank you so much for joining me today and going to retails with me. I had such a great time chatting with some of the employees and getting to see their incredible Halloween display. We are officially headed into the fall season, so if you are looking to decorate your home for Halloween or for Thanksgiving, you now know where you can go in the Pacific Northwest to find a bunch of stuff. I hope all of you are having a wonderful day and I will see you in a brand new adventure very soon.